Peak Car Talk, and I'm here with Mike. At Goodwood Festival of Speed. What is your first impression? Absolutely mind blown, right? Yeah. Mine is blown. Yeah. Um, so many varieties of cars, right? Yeah. So anybody who's never come, you have to come. Mm. It's total bucket list, right? Well, if you look at the things that you have in the United States, what uh -huh. will you compare the Goodwood Festival of Speed with? I'd say the only thing close to this would probably be Rensport. Rensport. Uh, Rensport in California. And that's only every four years. This is every year. It is, it yeah, is. Yeah, so that's the closest. And that's all Porsche. Yeah. But this is a mixture. I've never seen so many vintage race cars and everything like that in one place and put together so well. I mean, the, they've done such a good job with this. It's it's unbelievable. The, the, I mean, look how close we are. We're, I mean, right behind us is just unbelievable. So, Mike, we are at the 917. Uh, we, we're here. The so beautiful uh, race cars. It is. And, uh, have you have you seen uh, so many 917 in one place before? I've never seen so many 917s in one place before. This is absolutely beautiful. You hear them running, the smell of the race fuel, it starts to get your juices going, doesn't it? It I does, can... it does, it yeah. does. So uh, you and Aaron have something going with the 917 on your peak car tour, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We're gonna get that going, that'll yeah. be nice. Woo. So uh, what do you think about this beauty? Oh, it's so perfect. I mean, I love the cars with the livery, but this is absolutely amazing too. It just looks good in the silver. Just, just menacing, absolutely menacing. What a beautiful car zigzagging between the 917s together with an enthusiast like Mike is a privilege. Hard not to notice that Mike is taken by the seriousness of the moment. <laughs> Look at this! Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. It takes some time to embrace. At least that was the case for me, what you are experiencing. Wow! It's so nice, you can see everything in here. It's the flat 12 is so nice. The, the access you get here, guys, is unbelievable. I mean, when are you ever gonna get to come and touch something like this? You can actually touch this. These are real cars, these are not kid cars, these are real race cars. You guys gotta come here. You have to come here. It's, it's a kid in a candy store. In the middle of all, we ran into Sean from Ren 11 and we sat down for a talk. So Mike and I ran into Sean from uh, from Ren 11 and um, guys, isn't this what it's all about to connect with other enthusiasts? Hell yes, hell yes. Yeah. It's, it's amazing that I'm doing this. Uh, if you told me this morning I'm going to be interviewed, uh -huh. I would have dressed for the part. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, I know that the social media has brought us all together. So we're in this position now. We're all talking, enjoying cars together, and you know, enjoying brotherhood, almost like a fraternity. So. This is what it's about, right? It is, and uh, you have a spectacular Instagram account, I must say, and you just started on YouTube. I will link the YouTube channel below and make sure that you subscribe to the channel and have a look what Sean has to offer. I think that's going to be really good. And the P-Car Talk, yes. something that I continues to listen to your pubs. Congratulations yeah, to thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're gathering a lot of traction. You know, we're thankful for everybody that's listening, and uh, yeah, it's, you know, we're bringing guests on, we're interviewing people, we're going places and we never thought you know six months ago when we started we'd be in the position we're in now so we're eternally grateful for that and it's we're just enjoying the ride right now I so I'd love to meet Aaron someday yeah you will so tell us a bit about uh, Ren 11 okay um, well, Ren 11 started as a different page way back in August last year uh, as a coping mechanism for some personal tragedy that happened um, however it was really good and it started growing just by itself I was just putting up a few pictures here and there 
I started to see other people on there. I found uh, a link to enough peak art talk um, <laughs> via the explore page via someone else you interviewed, Mark Rabanek. Yeah. And uh, he just said, listen to the guys. I was like, okay. And it's, truth be told, the first podcast I've ever listened to. I've never listened to podcasts before. So. Yeah, but it's uh, very good. Oh, it's brilliant. It just It's like listening to a pair of friends in a pub talking about their opinions. And you're just going, well, oh, he's right. Yeah. He's not right. Exactly. <laughs> good. So let's uh, move over to Porsche for yeah. a second. Yeah. Right? I think that brand connects us quite well. Oh, yes. Uh, Absolutely. So, uh, can we start off with the existing brand, you know, from the mechanic? to the Panamera and the 911 and the 718. What is your favorite car at this moment that you actually can buy? Uh, right, right now, GT3 Touring. Right now, I think the best car I think you can buy that's been released recently for me, I think the GT4. I really love the GT4 platform, believe it or not. I mean, I love 911s, but I think, like, and I know it sounds very cliche, but they've gotten pretty big, right? So I think I think the GT4 still is almost dimension-wise. It reminds me of an older 911. It, so I think that's where I'm at with my headspace. With it. don't get me wrong, I love the newer GT cars. They're beautiful. They, like I would love to have a GT3. Don't get me wrong. But when I'm spending my dollars, I think that's where the sweet spot is. Yeah. Spending dollars, I must uh, again say the Cayman T. That's the biggest surprise. Yeah. Even though that I have placed an order for the Spider. Yeah. And it's going to be, you know, I'm a bit older, 40 plus. So obviously, yeah. I need to chop off the roof. Yeah. But, but uh, you know, I, I really am surprised about the Cayman T. There is a lot of people that will not get the allocations right mm -hmm. for the GT4. And, Absolutely. You know, dreaming of the GT4. And um, wait and see. Follow my channel. And you will see that the Cayman T is a proper driver's car. Yeah. So it's, with, when your opinion, let me ask you a question. With the Cayman T and the GT4, I know you don't, haven't driven the current GT4. I'm sure you've driven the past GT4, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, so, I haven't. No? Yeah, I haven't. The Spider, yes, but not the GT4. Okay. Well, so you haven't, but I know you probably know a lot of people that yeah. have and been around it and personal opinions. You know, with the Cayman T, you know, it's a lot of bang for your dollars though, right? It is, it is. Um, and uh, to be honest, it uh, surprises. It's like, oh my gosh, it, I, I, why is this car so good? It's mm -hmm. a bit annoying. Do you understand yeah, what exactly. I mean? Because, you know, I spent $100,000 more on the GT. Exactly. And I don't have a $100,000 more experience. Exactly. And that's the problem. So let's move forward. Okay. okay. I have a spectacular friend of mine, Eric, right? Uh -huh. He asked me a question. And he said, take a body, right? Uh, any Porsche model through the history and then put any engine into it. Oh. You know, taking a mixture. Like I like you, this exercise. You know the exercise. I'm going to start, guys, so you know, get the feeling on what I'm thinking about. Okay. Right? okay. So what I would do, I would take a Porsche 928, right? Are you following? 928. Yes. Got it. And I'm Transaxle put, car. Exactly. And I will put, money's no option here, right? Okay. So okay. I will put a Carrera GT V10 engine into the 928. <laughs> I like that. You that know? would be crazy. Okay, you, do you understand the game? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. like this okay. exercise. Okay. okay, who wants to go out first? Uh, oh, I get thrown <laughs> under <laughs> it. Okay. I'll throw you under the bus. Man. Okay. So what I would like to do, I would like to take maybe a 964 or a 993 bodied, wide body car, but I would like to put a Kramer engine in it, a K3 engine Ooh. in that car, and put that that turbo motor, that flat six that was at Le Mans in that car. Ooh. That would work for me. Yeah, That's that sound. Some, uh, yeah. How many horsepower did that have? That was a 700 horsepower car. 700 horsepower. Flat six. So Sean, are you still thinking? He's like, oh, there's too much choice. Hey, okay, <laughs> never ask someone with an ADD something like this. I'm just listening. But that's better. That's better. Do you know what? I'm going to be controversial. Okay. okay. I'm going to go for a 914. Okay. Okay. So mid-engine, yeah, yeah. old yeah. school, yeah. light as anything, and I will be happy to put in a 3.6 from a 964. Ooh. Because okay, uh, the I reason like, for this I is like experience. This. Yeah. All right. So you're looking at a 914, 914 stroke six, and you think, lie small, it's not going to do much, it's going to be, and then with that sort of power on it, which is what, 240? Yeah. 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 
more oh, it's than plenty. enough to scare that car's the light as a, of Yeah, me. that car's exactly. light as a feather. And it's about experience. What you mentioned, experience. It, it may not necessarily be the fastest out there, but it's how it feels. So how it connects. Yeah, yes. completely. Yeah. yeah, for me, it's all about the connection. It's all about the kinesthetic feeling of, of what a car yeah. makes you feel. And and what you, I call that, it's the art of driving, you know. It, it is, it's all about to get an experience, to get the pressure of being behind yes. the steering yeah. wheel. And, yeah. you know, and, you, and you can, you know, you, you feel it in your heart when you have that connection. Can, yeah. you, understand, can you relate to what I'm oh, saying? Completely. Yeah, completely. That's exactly for me. I've always been someone who, it's how a car feels around me when I'm driving. How happy I am at the end of that journey, whether that's to work, whether that's to see my other half, whether that's to yes. go and see anything, whatever. I'm so satisfied. And Smiles happy. per gallon, right? Smiles yeah, per gallon. Exactly. That was a good expression. Yeah. Smiles, Smiles per, per gallon. gallon. Done right. Like yeah. Every every mile you go, the more smiles you get, the better you're going to be. Oh, yeah. So uh, another question, both of you, right? Uh -huh. Which Porsche got into your heart first? I went first last time. You go first now. Yeah, I knew no. we'll do that as well. No. I'll go. I'm always ready. <laughs> I'm ready. I'll give you time to think. I'll go. Uh, okay. okay, so <laughs> yeah. child of the 80s. It was probably the 930 Turbo, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I love the, the wider arches. Um, I, I love that big whale tail. I just like the looks. It's pure 80s. I yeah. wish I was older in the 80s to appreciate it more. No, you know, all yeah, I got to. I, what you mean. I guess all I got to appreciate were the Transformers cartoons and whatnot. But I remember having Jazz, which was essentially a yes. Kramer, you know, yeah. 935. Um, I had Jazz as a Transformer, and I loved that Transformer. He was the best Transformer. So yeah, I'd, I'd be happy with the 930. That's Mike, what's your choice? So I don't, what, what's yeah, what, what? I had a neighbor of mine that was kind of affluent growing up. My father was never into motorsports, so he didn't have any of those cars, but I remember going over the garage. I was pretty young, probably eight or nine years old, and, and this was probably in 1988, and he had a poster of a 73 RS on the wall, and I saw that picture, and it kind of stopped me in my tracks even as a child, and I saw it. I mean, he didn't have one in the garage, it was just a picture, and ever since that moment, that image because it was a side profile of the car and I just kind of with the ducktail and it just it stuck with me ever since then and then you know I started to matchbox cars I started playing with the little cars and every time I would go to the store I would go after if there was a Porsche there to say hey I, I want this one I want this one to buy and that's kind of how it started for me I always had that dream Didn't they, wasn't there a ducktail matchbox uh, 911 they yes had a ducktail on it, it did didn't it? yeah I remember it was black and a friend of mine had one and yeah. I remember thinking I could never find one I yeah. just always got the other one it was, really annoyed me so I stole it I'm yeah so sorry. how about you <laughs> no, not, but, but, but uh, yeah for me it's uh, quite simple uh -huh. uh, you know it, uh, I watched the Paris the car when I was a child when the uh, Porsche uh, was fighting for the victory in, in Paris the car with the 959 uh -huh. I ended up with two 964 Carrera 4 just because of that experience wow. because I have two of them I love them uh -huh. uh, even though my first experience was uh, in the back seat of a Porsche 928S when oh, okay. I was 10 years old okay. that's why I bought my 928 because my son is exactly 10 years old oh so, okay so that was a ton paying of homage almost exactly. like there okay Okay, I get it. Uh, so uh, amazing. Does he share that passion now for that car? That it bounces a bit. Some uh, some weeks, you know, he's ten years old. He is curious that he's not with me right now at Goodwood Festival. <laughs> uh, but uh, when I need to pay a Porsche Centre visit, he's not that eager all the time. Yeah. There you go. Swings and roundabouts. Yeah. yeah. He's a child. It's coming around. Like he has. It sounds like he has it in his DNA, though. Yeah. So, uh, Sean, what are you driving? At the moment, I only have a company car. Um, however, at the end of this month, I get my first 911. Yeah. I'm getting a 996 in guards red with a factory aero kit, no sunroof, uh, black leather interior, and some manual C2. So it's like, oh, it's a, a, a I forgot to tell you, cable uh, throttle cable. Yeah. So it's uh, the purest of the water cool bunch. And it's guards red, so it's already good for like 700 miles. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. The faster. <laughs> Mike? I'm currently driving a 964. Uh, Carrera 2 1990 that has been heavily modded. Yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, been heavily modded. So uh, it's a it's a proper track weapon. Yeah. Um, I don't get to the track as often as I like, but it's it's set up for it when it's ready. So like when I do go occasionally, but I do I'm on the hunt too. 
I don't want to talk about this. You heard it first here, but I'm on the hunt for a 996 GT3. Ooh. So you know I've got that my. Is one of my favorite I know. Porsches. Yes. I have spent over 500. They're laps on they're the terrible. You don't buy one. Don't buy one. <laughs> <laughs> Let me at least get cost. mine before you guys raise the price, right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, last um, topic, we are three petrol heads, right? Yeah. yeah. Definitely. I think the the definition of petrol heads. That's Week, right? Oh, of course. Yeah. So, uh, Taycan. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm down with it. I love it. I love the idea of it. You know, uh, I'm, I'm uh, as uh, my audience know, I've uh, paid the down payment for them, but mm -hmm. I'm getting cozy. Yeah. Why? Well, um, you know, um, uh, I did have some slight issues with my 992 with electronics, right? And I, let me see, just how much little, electronics, just, yeah, just <laughs> so how much electronics is it in the Taycan? Um, <laughs> just a hair. Just, just, a, just a bit, but, but uh, we have the old scenic today, yeah. beautiful. Uh, I think the design-wise, spot on. But how are we gonna do the transition, go into electric? Are we gonna lose petrol heads like us over the, on the way or, or are, gonna, are we going to stick by yeah i think it's a great question because you and i had a little conversation you know off camera about it and i think the challenge behind that is going to be price point right yeah so it's hard to justify one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to daily drive because on the weekends as you you know you talked about you have a spider on the way yeah. that's a combustion motor yeah. yeah you know you have your cayman t that's a combustion motor you're going to have fun with those cars so i think what's in my personal opinion what's going to happen is people are going to daily drive something electric um, so they're going to spend a lot of time in that. They're going to drive to work, you know, drive the family around. But when it's time to have fun, exactly. I think they're still going to use a combustion engine because the sound, the feel, like we talked about before, is very visceral. So you're going to be there and you're going to get those emotions. Yeah. You know, granted, you know, the, the Newton meters, the torque are there in the electric cars. They're amazing. But it's still not going to have the same kind of smell and feel and the inspiration. It's almost kind of like, you know, we have five senses. I always say, well, it, it inspires a sixth sense. The vehicle yeah, exactly. does. It, it's hard to describe what it is, but the people who know, they know. They're yeah. like, oh, this car makes me feel this way. So I think... Nevertheless, there's yeah. a lot of torque in an electric engine. Yeah. And I think, I think, I think honestly, like the real answer is going to be after the Taycan. Personally, yes. I think the real answer is going to be the Macan electric car, yeah. because the full electric Macan. Because I think that price point will be less, and people like us and other people that are listening and watching can justify maybe that price point to daily drive that car, because I think that that price point is supposed to be anywhere from like eighty, right, eighty thousand. I think. Well, we don't know. No, yet. I know, but I, I'm guessing. Yeah. Probably. 80 right so you're almost taking half of what the Taycan is you know what is your fortune I've been fortunate enough to have uh, been, been close with the uh, hopefully I'm allowed to say on this show the, the Audi e-tron yep. um, yeah. because it shares the PPE platform that the Taycan is, yeah. is utilizing um, and one of the things I found great about it you go inside it and you feel like you are in an Audi. You do not feel like you're in something space age. It just feels like Audi, which yeah. is another thing which I think with the Taycan is going to be great. With the price point being under 50, uh, is that dollars or is that pounds? Is that, I think oh, it's euros? dollars. I think that's dollars. dollars. Yeah. But I think so your tax is on, on yeah. top of that. Yeah, so of course. You're most likely looking at uh, about eight to 90,000 pounds, if I'm yeah. guessing. It would be 150,000 pounds. Okay. They like yeah. putting that kind of tax on it. In yeah, yeah, in Great Britain, you always have to put some money under the table yeah. as well. So. <laughs> yeah, you're telling me. It, most of it goes on there. Um, so if, if we consider that, there's going to be early adopters, like there have been for Audi e-tron. Yeah. You, know, you can see it peppered around the area now but you know where I live in Northamptonshire there's plenty of them so people are going to be invested in, uh, in that sense um, I, I think the it's it's reminding people certain things uh, that you know this is still early days the technology is going to filter through Volkswagen group are investing in massively that's why they've got this car yeah uh, outside going Breaking down the, the record in Goodwood Festival yeah, yeah exactly yeah. 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 did you see it in the wet as well yeah. oh it's yeah still, it, it took insane. off and you're thinking it means business yeah I think I think it's 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 amazing because it allows us to utilize our fossil fuel cars at the weekend exactly. you know I'm I'm looking at getting a small electric car to go to work because I'm it's a 40 yeah, mile round trip exactly what I was talking about yeah, yeah. and I, yeah. I, I've got charge points free at work yeah, exactly. so yeah. 
that's why exactly. like, all the money can go into, what was it, all in suspension? Yeah, go, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. exactly. <laughs> anyway, it has been a true pleasure having both of you on the show. Yeah, thank um, you. Thanks for having us. Yes, and it's going to be so nice following both of you on social media. I really appreciate and it. And remember, guys, underneath you will have the links both to Peacock Talk and to, to uh, Ren11. So uh, just uh, hit those links and uh, have fun with Porsche. Well, how does it feel to be this close to the track? Feels really good. Yeah? Yeah. So, uh, what do you, oh, Ooh. you're in 935 approaching. Yeah. It's my baby. <laughs> how does that feel? It feels amazing. Yeah. Does um, that give you chills or what? So for uh, the American viewers, how, how far are we from the track right now? Um, probably eight yards, seven eight yards. yards. Yeah, mm -hmm. not very close. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we have to thank uh, Jeffrey for connecting with us. Yes, that's very true. It yeah, is. Thank um, you, Jeff. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he has been a, he is a true enthusiast. Yes. Here. I have not been privileged to meet him, but I think you have. Yes, I have met him. So, so anyway, yeah. thumbs up to Jeff, yeah, right? Thanks for the listeners and watchers for putting us together. So that's great. Great day we've had. Outstanding day, even though we're a little soggy. It is, a great it time, is, right? It is, but the umbrella works, doesn't it? Yeah, it saved us. But what a great show, huh? How was it to be standing close to the racetrack? Absolutely amazing, right? Right? Like heart pounding, what a great time! And huh? we ran into Sean. Yep, we saw Sean from Ren 11. Yeah, and uh, he, what a great guy! Thank you for introducing of me. Of course, of course. You have to uh, introduce me to uh, Aaron someday. I will, absolutely. You come over our way in Florida, and we'll get on the palm trees in the water, and uh, we'll have a great time. That I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Mike, thank you for participating hey, in my channel. Thank you so much. It was an honor.